Ah, I love the sound of leaves, or oh, basically dry, succulent leaves being pulled. I don't know. So satisfying. This is Echeveria derlu that needs a bit of cleaning. And this plant is a Lawi hybrid. It's also known as Delulu. But those leaves have dried up. Well, actually, they rotted first and now have dried up. So I'm just removing them. And it's finally autumn. And you know what that means? Time to propagate some succulents or take some cuttings for some succulents that grows when the weather is milder and not so hot. I bought these plants three years ago and this is the mother plant here and this one and that one and that one is the baby or are the babies and every year it seemed to grow one plant so three years now four plants after cleaning it up I've noticed that there are some roots growing inside there and also down in the bottom here so now what I would like to do is propagate from this so I'm going to twist this and as you can see now, that has roots that sort of dried up because it hasn't been propagated or haven't been taken off really since, well, I haven't worked in my garden for three months. So basically, <laughs> this plant was long overdue for a propagation, but I did not have time to do that. So now I'm doing this, but since it's autumn, I am going to bring this inside but I can actually just leave it here for now but the leaves that I'm going to propagate from it I need to take them inside and grow them inside so I'm going to remove some of the leaves or the back leaves basically because you can see the shape of the plant it's sort of lopsided so one side is thicker compared to the other so this is the best excuse to take some leaves for propagation so I'm pulling it down so from the top I'll push it downwards and take some leaves. So this plant is a hybrid between Achiveria Lawi and Derenbergii, I think, if I'm not mistaken. So now, is that good enough at one, two, three, four, five? Maybe I could do a couple more. Six. Uh, this one's got a spot, so I have to take that off because that is not going to grow. It's just going to rot and also that one. There you go, you're pretty. No, you need some more. A couple more leaves in the back. For one, I'm running out of hands. I'll put you there for now. And is that even now? There you go, good enough. One more. There you go. So now, from this one, instead of waiting three years for them to grow pups on their own while attached to the mother plant the best way to propagate it is to remove the leaves so you can have more babies much quicker so i leave that one there and also this one here now that's also dry inside there so i'll just take that off and remove any dry leaves this one is not going to grow anymore they're just going to rot so any yellowing but that one is good enough. I'm going to leave it as is, but you can see the fresh root at the back there. So I will get back to you later on. And last one. Okay. More dry leaves or dead to be leaves and lopsidedness. So we remove more leaves for propagation. So at the back there, you can see all that roots from that side. Look, look at all those roots. And if I chop the mother head off or the mother plant, this will produce more plants. So what I'm going to do now is actually just cut this off. And hopefully that should, oh, that will grow some pups in there. But if it doesn't, it doesn't really matter because I got more leaves to play with and grow and also now now that i've already exposed that i want that to dry up but this one's now i need to remove all these leaves and take this inside 
Now I'm going to remove this whole pot here because it's getting hit by the sun. So I'm going to put this one in a bit more shadier spot. So this area here, still out in the open, but it doesn't get direct sunlight. So I'm going to put that there. And also I noticed a little bit of dead mealybug or the cocoon of a mealybug over here. So I'll remove that just to make sure there's no mealybug, which it doesn't have. So that is excellent. And then this one's now, hang on, I might as well put it away for now. Let it dry up and remove all the leaves. And of course, better not forget the label. Oh, sorry, that one with the black spot, chuck it out. Okay, so I can leave that there for now and hopefully some babies will pop out. Cotyledon orbiculata or Ophila orbiculata long form. So there's a short form of this variegated uh, cotyledon, but this one is the long form. Me love you long, long, long time. I have <laughs> loved this plant for so long and it's so easy to grow if you propagate on the right type. So basically I haven't propagated any of this before. Well, yes, actually I do. But anyway, this one, I haven't taken cuttings. That's what I'm going to say. Now it's today at time to take some cuttings. Now this one here has got some aphids. So we have to get rid of this part here first. So this plant grows or best time to propagate it is when the weather cools down. During summer, not advisable to hack them. But now that it's autumn and today is 23 degrees forecast. Now, okay, just an ant. We chuck that out and then we get rid of this because this is not going to grow. I have never been successful in growing them from leaves, but that doesn't stop me from trying. So I'm still going to keep them. But this other one here, the flower stalk, take that off. And of course, we remove the top and this one is not going to grow. But again, can't blame me for trying. <laughs> But this one here, see how it's stemmy and long? Not anymore. <laughs> cut it off from where the node is, but actually I should have cut it above the node here and then that way it can grow some babies there, but I didn't do that. So I prefer for this one to hang on. I saw some ants on top, not uncles, just ants. <laughs> hang on, ah, oh, look, we have to shake this off. Shake it off, there you go, you die. Okay, I'm sorry, ants. Okay, aphids. Now, shake it and then pick it with the tweezer. I can use my insecticide spray or to get rid of the aphids, but no harm in picking it out yourself. It's a little bit tedious, but run, aphids, run. <laughs> this is coming. Okay, so no more aphids nice and clean so i'm going to continue with this one because i can see some ants go away ants no aphids here ants so you better move on now i'm going to do some trimming so that one that i just chopped off over here that should grow some babies on top but i have to remove the leaves to make room for the new growth so there should be one coming out of there but anyway this one now on the side is a little bit too variegated for my liking so what i'm going to do is i look for another spot this is so hard to chop 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 because the babies are still short so you can see oh, there's more ants here aphids still that's why the aphids have to get rid of them so that the ants don't come and give them a piggyback to somewhere else so this is indication of what I'm going to chop up. Now this one here has got a few nodes. You can see that. So but it's side shoot or the lateral stem that's grown from that. So now this one here, I am going to propagate this. I'm going to take off. There you go. Because it's already got nodes. So I'm hoping that that would grow there. But the one that I've taken off most of the time, it grows new pups from that side. And the uh, growing period is in autumn or spring so at the end of winter when the temperature is just sort of not too hot or not too cold that's when they grow but once it gets hot they go dormant and stops growing apart from uh, showing some flowers or so they would grow flowers and then after that they go night night for a while while the heat is on <laughs> and then now it's cooled down they're back on again so next one would be this one here okay Okay, take that one off and have another one. And also, another trick I find is that if you have some aphids still, either you can spray it or in this case, pick it with a... We'll shake it off like that first and see how the aphids just drops. And if it doesn't drop, you pick it with a tweezer. 
So that normally does the trick. And of course, you have to inspect or make sure you check on it. Don't just leave it and hope for the best or keep your fingers crossed because um, the aphids can come back and eat your plants and it will not grow. So I have taken three plants or cuttings from this one, but there's another one on the side here that I would like to chop, chop, chop. Okay. So again, make sure there's no aphids or nasties or especially mealybug, no mealybug, no aphids anymore. Then now I can pack this away and let it dry up before I plant it. And this would actually grow roots fairly quickly when it's cold. So the next couple of weeks, after two weeks, maybe there'll be some roots showing, but I will keep you updated on that one. The rest of these plants now, I'm going to leave as is because there's a lot of baby growth. So inside there, there's pups growing and then also at the back here and a few more I've seen even here the tip is sort of growing new shoots or new plants or new leaves and so I'm best just leaving this now as is let this dry up and in a couple of hours I'm gonna spray it with my insecticide or my insecticide <laughs> what's plant with the label of sedifolium variegata now, I've been looking online as to exactly what the identity of this plant because it has been called by so many names, but it's so beautiful. This one has been grown in about 50% UV shade cloth area. And as you can see, the center of it is starting to go red. But if this is grown in the sun or open area, this will actually become much redder than what it is now. So a lot of yellow tones, green tones, and of course going to have pink tones first and eventually sort of a more reddish tone. It is a very stemmy plant at the moment it has stopped growing during summertime so also another name for this I find actually is called Echeveria Matogalii Sedoidis Varigata whether it's the correct name I'm not too sure but maybe I should say I'm guessing that it's probably a hybrid between Echeveria Matogalii and also uh, Sedum Sedoidis probably so now and it went variegated and this looks very similar to another plant called Mickey Mouse or something like that but anyway it's now time to propagate this one as well so I've been itching for so long to chop chop this one but after a year so this is a year old and when I got this it was much smaller so probably a third thickness and also not as tall as this one so now you can see all that stems there so now is a good opportunity because sedum tends to go dormant in uh, during summer and other it's autumn it's going to cool down so they tend to grow during autumn but the minute we get frost sedum tends to or a lot of the sedum tend to go dormant and go to sleep but this one being a cross i find that i've grown this outside and it's very frost hardy so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna be really bad and i'm gonna chop off that one there chop off that one there and sorry but <laughs> i have a pot prepared here earlier this is gonna grow in here so that's where it's gonna grow one two three on that side and you can see all those baby ones growing in the bottom there or new shoots or new stem so you can see that it's still a young plant or young stem now i'm gonna go and chop some more off okay it might look a bit brutal but this is the best way to propagate them so if you don't do this you're not gonna have <laughs> too many plants okay so that one can stand alone on its own look but I'm gonna chop that off in there so I can have more plants and I haven't actually grown this from a leaf so I'm not too sure whether it will grow but it's worth giving it a shot and up the top here I'm gonna go chop that off and this one now I'm gonna leave that as is so it can feed or else <laughs> it will die but those new shoots once they grow they're gonna fill up this area and that area and now I'm gonna have a lot more plants to play with next year there you go so this one the mother pot I'm gonna put back where I had it growing which is in my 50% UV shade cloth area and the cuttings that I've taken I don't know how quickly these ones would grow or how fast it will grow roots but I am willing to wait and find out, but they will eventually grow. But for now, I'm going to actually take this inside where I have a grow light. And if you don't have a grow light, then you can grow them somewhere a little bit in the shade, but still bright area, but shady or no direct sunlight. Now, this other one here, 
I've got a very, very dry uh, soil that I prepared earlier on this one. And I'm going to pretend I've already left it to dry off for a couple of hours. And I'm going to insert it there. So one, another one here, or maybe the other way around. Two. Oh, they're so pretty. Three. So now I'm going to leave that now for a couple of hours. And what I'm going to do is submerge this whole pot up to that level. Just leave a couple of inch or maybe an inch dry soil on top. And then that will encourage the plant to grow roots and try and reach into where there's water. This is a Chevalier lemon and lime variegated. It was a little bit difficult, or should I say, uh, slow in growing them at first because they came from an area wherein they don't get frosts in Sydney, here in Australia, and we're in Canberra, Australia. So it took a while to grow here, but when it finally did, look at that beautifulness. And also I find that it is somewhat resistant to diseases so or pests. I never had any fungus issues with this one, but as far as pests is concerned, I can see some remnants of mealybug inside there. So down here, I can see some mealybug cocoon. See that white fluffy bit? And there's none, no residents anymore. It has moved out. And since I haven't tended to my garden for three months, this has been attacked by mealybug in the past. But uh, look, I don't know if you can see that inside there. So up the top here, there is a mealybug, and see that? So that one is still alive. I can see some redness. Look, yep, still alive, no dead. <laughs> so, but the plant doesn't seem to mind it. It's just, okay, some dry leaves in the bottom, so I need to pull out all these dry leaves. And also, because it's grown so beautiful, this would have to be one of my favorite echeveria or variegated echeveria. I don't really want to take some cuttings or ruin the beauty of this clusterness. So you can see some dry leaves inside there, but that can be easily fixed by removing them. Hang on. I'm using the pointy tweezer. I could easily stab it, so I better get my forceps down here. So I can gently pull off some leaves inside there. But I'm looking at this spot here. Now this spot here now is all very thick cluster and there's one plant here that's being smothered, choked. Now, I'm in two minds whether I should remove the baby, which is still too young, or remove one of the bigger ones here, which is actually this one here. So if I do remove this one here, that would encourage this one to grow this way and fill that up. So I am now going to take it off, take it off. But before I do that, I have to make sure first that it has some nodes or some roots at least growing. I can see some stem and a little spider, a baby spider in there, living there. But I'm going to just actually just pull this off. So inside there. So anyway, now Echeveria grows mostly during summer, especially this one. Uh, the thin leaf one tends to grow in summer and they require a lot of watering. Even though it's hot, they love it. But there are some echeverias with thick leaves, like your agavoides, they tend to do the growing when it's cold. So this one now is on its way out, but I can bring this inside, I can take it inside and grow it under the grow light. Or if you haven't got a grow light, any lamp will do. Hang on. I'm going to twist, grab this one and twist. Twist and shout, don't shout, okay. Oops, I'm gonna pull my finger in there and then I just hook it up. <laughs> Hopefully it will cooperate, doesn't wanna cooperate. So time for the snip squad. <laughs> snip, snip, snip it. Okay, there you go. Now there's no roots on this one yet, but it will grow roots. But I have to remove the dry leaves to expose some nodes and also expose the mealy bag. Look at that, that's hiding there. You think you can hide but you can't because the interceptors here <laughs> have intercepted the dead mealybug now. So you can see that that's actually flippy floppy dry. So this plant needs to be, sorry spider, needs to be <laughs> watered, the whole plant, the whole mother plant. But of course this one, a few of the leaves is gonna die off, but 
this one will at least grow into another plant like this. So in a couple of years, the center as well, it's growing some thick double-headed. So maybe I could still remove some of this one. Maybe that one. Yeah, but that one is going to grow this way. So I don't know uh, which one. So I'm going to leave these two young ones here and remove this other one here. Plus from the back anyway, you're not going to see that. So for the meantime, I can enjoy the front view, which is a one, two, three, which is still quite beautiful over here, but the back. And then that one as well, I have to grow this way. And the back can nurture the two small ones growing here. And so I now have to take this one off. Anyway guys, that's all I've got for this video. Hopefully I'm able to share some information that you didn't know before. And so this one now, can I twist it? Maybe, but I have to take the whole plant in like this. And I don't want to twist you, but I have to. Yes, success. And look, roots there's roots on that bit so now this one is just a matter of letting it dry up and i can stick it in soil straight away and that will grow some more roots anyway guys thank you for watching and hope i'll see you in the next video now i'll just inspect first see if there's any mealybug no more okie dokie bye for now i'm off to the hospital where hubby is